The number one excuse I hear from people on why not to buy silver is that they're afraid that the government is going to confiscate it. I've heard this excuse hundreds of times, and I thought that I would tear it up once and for all. The first thing everybody cites is Franklin Roosevelt's executive order of April 5th, 1933, that required all citizens to turn their gold into the local Federal Reserve branch in the name of the Treasury. What people first miss is the fact that all of the gold that was confiscated was paid for at 100% face value with paper dollars. So technically, nobody was out any money, and it wasn't just an outright confiscation of wealth. The fine for not complying with this executive order was $10,000, back when the average salary was about $1,300 a year, and up to 10 years in jail. Can anybody name me one person that was arrested and convicted under this executive order? And do you think that there was 100% compliance to it? I know of at least 10 stories that people have told me about their grandparents not falling for this monetary sleight of hand. They kept their coins and passed that wealth on to later generations, protecting them from not only the confiscation, but the raging inflation that has destroyed the dollar ever since then. Just to give you an example of what kind of destruction of wealth this confiscation had, say for example somebody had five one-ounce gold double eagles, and they decided not to trade it in for the $100 face value Federal Reserve notes that the executive order demanded. Those five one-ounce coins are now worth about $8,500. The real shocker is the purchasing power of the $100 today is about what $6 was back in 1933. A shocking disparity that points out the true generational theft that occurred back then. Once all 20,000 tons of gold was in the Fed's coffers, they then revalued that gold from $20.67 an ounce to $35. That is where the real crime happened. It wasn't in the confiscation, it was in the revaluation. Overnight, the $20 that the people got paid for for their gold lost 40% of their purchasing power. Meanwhile, giving all those that held on to their gold, including those that didn't comply, the government, the Fed, foreign gold holders, and insiders like Joseph Kennedy, got paid an overnight profit of 75%. This during the time of a Great Depression. The other key aspect of this is that they only confiscated gold as they left silver alone. Silver remains to have so many industrial uses and was not seen as a threat to the monetary system back then. In fact, silver remained in our coins for almost 30 years after that until they finally cut that anchor to monetary reality in 1964. And please don't buy the BS sales pitch for buying numismatic coins as they were exempt from the confiscation. It is simply a sales trick to get you to pay for high-priced ounces of metal so that some sales guy can take your money now instead of fearing a government later. So I want to ask you, now that you know a little bit more about the 1933 confiscation, what do you think the best course of action would have been? Hold on to their gold or take their paper? Let's say that there's a national emergency and they issue the exact same kind of order. What would be the easiest source for the United States government and the bankers to secure tons of metal? If you look into the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order that was just recently signed on St. Patrick's Day, the answer jumps out at you. I would say that the very first place that they would start confiscating metal would be any domestic mine production. Currently, the United States is the number four worldwide gold producer at about 260 tons a year. The United States is also the number eight silver producer, producing about 1,200 tons a year. Notice the gold to silver ratio of domestic mine production is about five ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. And remember that right now, gold and silver are currently trading for 50 ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold. The next easiest place to confiscate silver and gold would be the very large ETFs. GLD claims to have 1,300 tons of gold. The SLV silver ETF claims to have 9,600 tons of silver. Very quickly, the United States government could go in and confiscate the mining production of all domestic resources and the major stockpiles that are held in the ETFs and the COMEX. But I don't think they would stop there, mainly because I don't believe the ETFs really have all that gold and silver. So what would be the next easiest place for the large federal bureaucracy to seize? I would say that they would go after large bullion wholesalers and retailers. Between those three sources, they should be able to confiscate a grand majority of the wealth out there if they're going to do that. So what about you? Back in 1934, when Roosevelt issued that executive order, most American citizens really thought they were helping out the country and believed in the president and the banking institutions. 
Today, it's a totally different story after decades of political and financial abuse. Average Americans don't trust the government or the banks with their money. In fact, most of the people that are buying gold and silver have already woken up to that fact. So now you have a bunch of citizens who are wide awake. Do you think that they would comply to that executive order? Judging by every single person that I know that is buying gold and silver, they would not likely give up their metal any more than they would give up their guns, food, or kids. At some point, there's just a line that cannot be crossed between slavery and freedom. What do you think the government would do at that point? Do you think they would send in SWAT teams into a guy's house because he has a couple mercury dimes that may or may not be there? There's a trillion dollar drug business that's currently going on in the United States. Last year, during that trillion dollar drug war, they only conducted about 3,300 SWAT team raids that year, and many of them for large million dollar stashes of drugs and cash. I guarantee if they tried pulling off one or two, the backlash of citizens would be amazing. They would literally be up in arms about a government gone wild. It's not worth the political risk. And this would assume that local sheriffs and police would risk their lives or even go along with this program. There are a lot of police and military people that I know that are stackers too. And why would they risk their lives over a stash that most likely is not even inside their house? Then what would the government do? And they're certainly not going to be able to do this in a, after a dollar collapse. Because who would pull off the raids? I can tell you what, if police officers' checks bounce, they're not showing up for work. Especially after their entire life savings is wiped away. They'll probably be in the mob with pitchforks and torches on Wall Street. And the whole confiscation issue rests upon the policymakers even knowing that gold and silver are real money. The dollar during these last three years was devalued almost 50%. When you wake up in the morning, do you care about the price of gold? Well, I pay attention to the price of gold, but I think it reflects a lot of things. It reflects uh, global uncertainties. I think people are, the reason people hold gold is as a protection against what we call tail risk, really, really bad outcomes. And to the extent that the last few years have made people more worried about potential of a major crisis, then they have gold as a protection. Do you, th do you think gold is money? No. Listening to Ben Bernanke and the rest of these technocrats, I really believe after 80 years of this financial paradigm, these guys really think that if they just pull enough financial levers, they can lead us to financial nirvana. That means they would have to do something before the dollar collapses. Because after the dollar dies, all bets are off, locally, nationally, and globally. The global market would be on fire at that point. No technocrat in the world can possibly step in front of a market trying to reach a new paradigm. And what do you think the global financial response would be to a United States confiscating gold and silver? Do you think other assets would be at risk in the United States? Think about the quadrillions in the stock markets, the bond markets, the derivatives, the cash accounts, the forex markets, the real estate that would respond. And for what? Gold and silver make up less than 1% of total financial wealth out there. In fact, I'm willing to bet that since the silver market's so small, they could confiscate every single ounce in the United States and not be able to pay for one day's worth of interest on the United States debt. So knowing the political and financial realities of a confiscation, it is insane to me that people would not buy silver based off of the threat of a confiscation that I don't believe is possible. Which brings me to the real threat of confiscation, your paper wealth and their paradigm. The easiest way to steal wealth is simply print more money. And that's what the bankers and the governments have been doing for years. The United States can pay any debt it has because we can always print money to do that. Listen to this congressional testimony of Alan Greenspan guaranteeing any amount of money the government wants to spend. Do you still believe that we should maintain the fundamental principles of Social Security as it, as it did in 83? I think we should maintain the principles of Social Security, but I think the existing structure is not working. And that uh, until we can construct a system which creates the savings that are required to build the real assets so that the retirees have real goods and services, uh, we don't have a system that's working. We have one that basically moves cash around. And we can guarantee cash benefits as far out and at whatever size you like, but we cannot guarantee their purchasing power. Unlike us, when we reach the end of our credit line, the government will not stop its profligate ways. It will simply blow through every dollar it can get its hand on, trying to put off the day of reckoning. I believe that before all of this is over and the dollar dies, your retirement funds will be wiped clean. 
If you have a 401k, an IRA, a Roth IRA, social security, annuity, any long-term savings plan, or pension, be prepared to have it destroyed. Kiss it goodbye. There is $8 trillion of sovereign debt that needs to be rolled over this year, and the choices aren't good. The United States needs to roll over $2 trillion, Japan needs to roll over $3 trillion, the Eurozone about a trillion and a half, and the rest of the world another half a trillion dollars. There isn't enough money in the world to buy all this debt. And who's buying it? How do you fund this $8 trillion worth of debt? The government can massively raise taxes and cut spending, which would destroy an already weak economy and put every single politician on the firing line. The Fed can buy more debt and continue printing money, which would cause more nations to dump the dollar and adding to the inflationary fire here in the United States, as we've already seen with the BRIC nations dumping the dollar in bilateral trade and oil purchases. This insidious process also destroys your savings. The government can confiscate all of your retirement savings, and that would kick the can down the road for a while. Or America could just default on its debt, and we will see massive upheaval in every aspect of our lives. As you can see, there are no good choices, and if you fear paying a 10% penalty on getting your wealth out of retirement funds, think about the 100% confiscation and inflation tax that you could be subject to. You need to get ahead of the curve if you're going to survive this paradigm shift into a post-dollar world. Your income taxes may never be lower than they are today. The price of silver may never be lower than it is today. I want to give you an example of what happens when governments cannot raise capital in the bond markets because of surging interest rates, or when governments cannot raise taxes in a faltering economy. They go after the fat free money sitting in retirement accounts and checking accounts. And if that was just the end of the thieving, that would be one thing, but it never stops there. When Argentina went through their hyperinflation, they froze all accounts and then devalued and inflated away the currency. People could only take small amounts of money out of their bank while the majority of their assets turned into nothing. And if you don't think this is going to happen here, the Department of Labor floated a trial balloon about, quote, annuitizing 401ks. The plan would get rid of those pesky and risky management accounts and to put your savings in safe and secure treasury bonds. We are already at the point where China, Japan, and the rest of the world refuses to buy any more of our debt. The Federal Reserve is buying anywhere between 60 and 80 percent of the new debt and now is even balking at QE3. And people wonder who in the world is going to buy the biggest bond bubble ever. Well, the answer might just be your retirement account. So if you think the government is going to come steal some coins from you in a midnight raid with the SWAT team, surely you must expect them to declare a bank holiday and steal your wealth that you have in your bank, because that would be far easier. Or nationalize trillions of dollars sitting in IRAs and 401ks and invest them into treasury bonds that nobody in the world wants because that would be easier. Or they don't even have to take your assets. They can simply steal all of your wealth by printing more money, which is what they've been doing. And to me, that's the worst option, because not only does it destroy your savings, but it also destroys your earnings. You see, the real threat of confiscation is having your money in their casino. They can cut you off from your money without any moment's notice or any recourse. Your only logical choice is to get your money out of their casino and keep it in your possession. Don't keep it in your house, don't keep it in a bank, take possession, and take control. I feel the heart of this confiscation issue has nothing to do with the government stealing your wealth. It is the fear of taking responsibility for your wealth. It is so much easier having a million dollars sitting in a bank somewhere than a monster box of eagles in your possession. Having someone else responsible for your money is far easier than you taking responsibility for your wealth. Well, in the age of a counterparty risk, you have to take responsibility for yourself and your wealth.